So whilst we're getting back to time, I would like to uh, continue um, uh, with his uh, presentation about um, uh, the, the larger picture within Ethiopia, development and operation of the sugar industry. I won't be able to say a lot more than the filled content of his presentation. Um, uh, what also already came forward from the, uh, uh, the interview with uh, Abera was the high potential for sugarcane production in Ethiopia. Um, well, um, as you may know or may not know, uh, Ethiopia is blessed with a lot of hectares of uh, irrigable land, uh, a lot of water sources. Um, but uh, at this moment, actually, the total developed area of uh, land, uh, particularly with regards to irrigation, is still very minimal. Um, for sugarcane, taking only 2.5% of that uh, area. Um, However, the government of Ethiopia is very much uh, looking at uh, uh, two dyna uh, several dynamics. One, a very quickly growing population, as well as a population that requires a lot more sugar, a population that is in development. We're very much looking at how can we expand uh, production within Ethiopia and uh, substitute uh, import. Uh, so sugar development sector is actually one of the major sectors in which uh, projects are taking place. You may have heard it through the news and uh, publications that there's uh, projects in, uh, being established all over, factories as well. And uh, potentially, and that is the idea of the Ethiopian government, it will very much contribute to the economy, also in terms of uh, it being an export product. Um, so there's high, high attention towards the uh, sh sugar uh, industry, uh, the sugar uh, growing. Um, the policy that has been set out, uh, because there have been a lot of problems in import, export, policy that has been set out is really to manage the imports, which always have to uh, be bought using that, that uh, very valuable foreign currency, um, and to steer towards creating exports. And again, as I mentioned, uh, tackling the consumption within the country. Um, the sector, as it is, is very attractive for uh, investments. Uh, there's a high potential for development, as I mentioned. Only 2.5% of, of the land has actually been developed. Um, at this moment, uh, actually last year, since 2019, uh, the government has also uh, started a policy shift uh, not with regards to the import-export, but more towards privatizing. As came forward from the previous presentation, all the current sugar production is state-owned, managed. Uh, um, and at this moment, uh, so since last year, the government is really looking at, privati uh, at privatizing the, the sector. Um, and um, uh, actually, since uh, January 2019, 30 companies have shown interest and presented their profiles to work in joint ventures with the Ethiopian Sugar Corporation. Um, this is just a quick overview of um, uh, all the potential irrigation sites for sugarcane development. It's, uh, yeah, it's a large amount, um, and um, uh, I believe several of these have already been developed. But it also, overall, you can see that it's, it really goes into the hundred thousands of hectares in terms of suitable area. Um, with regards to the development status, so sugarcane has been cultivated by small farmers since a long time, 16th century. Uh, with regards to large scale, since the past uh, 70 years, so in the 50s of the last uh, century, the experience started with commercial farming. It started actually at Wonji, so uh, at the, the sugar industry uh, estate where Abera uh, was uh, interviewed from. Um, and it was actually started by a, uh, a Dutch-based company. Um, uh, that back then, the initial production was 140 tons of sugar per day. Um, in 2014, um, uh, the status of amount of factories was only that there were three, and they were producing 75,000 tons of sugar per annum. Um, uh, yeah, from, from a total of um, uh, 28,000 hectares. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll have
numbers there uh, a bit later. Um, at this moment, 10 huge sugar development projects are that already mentioned require high investments and are under construction in various lowland areas of the country. Um, and that's an important point that I uh, um, want to mention. Um, is what Abera is actually reflecting on is that the new developments are very much impacting the, the current uh, sugar estates and their sort of rehabilitation, uh, so their intensification of pro, uh, produce. Uh, at this moment, about 103,000 hectares of land is covered with sugarcane um, uh, under eight operational factories. Uh, production has passed 500,000 tons. And there is power generation, uh, millions of liters of ethanol. So there's not only uh, sugar, obviously, coming from uh, sugarcane, but there's ethanol um, uh, production as well. Um, when all these projects, the 10 projects that are mentioned, are completed, uh, the intention is that the pr sugar production is boosted to 3.9 to 4.717 million tons. And ethanol production would be 181 million liters. Um, uh, as well as that the factories would contribute to 709 megawatts of electric power to the national grid. Um, the, um, the amount of labor actually involved is uh, uh, tremendous. There's 15,000 members organized in 70 sugarcane outgrowing and providing associations on 17,000 hectares of land. Um, So back to the development uh, of sugarcane, uh, the government goal is actually to satisfy local demand and become one of the top uh, 10 sugar exporting countries. As I mentioned, there is quite a lot of import going on. There is an increasing population and increasing demand, increasing wealth, etc., for sugar. Um, and so primary goal is to satisfy local demand. Um, however, the, well, the sector does have quite a lot of challenges to meet these goals. Um, as I mentioned, the growing population um, uh, uh, has just meant that the sugar demand uh, has not been able to uh, meet the supply. Um, and that really relates to the implementation capacity, um, the finance available, uh, foreign exchange, uh, spare parts as well as machinery supply, which always was highlighted by Abera's presentation, actually, that you know, all the spare parts for the drag lines, etc., all have to be bought with foreign, uh, a foreign currency, and that is a very big challenge. Um, also a challenge is water shortage during drought years. Uh, good to add. I mean, obviously, we're presenting Ethiopia as a, a country that is very uh, uh, well suited for agricultural production, but there is the uh, uh, challenge of uh, drought periods, drought spells. Um, also in areas that are being irrigated, uh, uh, salinity is a challenge, as well as waterlogging, uh, or vice versa, waterlogging and salinity. Uh, this, as also highlighted by Abera, uh, is due to poor management, uh, water management practices, drainage, amount of irrigation, and the underlying soil conditions. Um, there's High runoff in several areas in which uh, um, sugarcane is actually being produced. And there's quite an amount of liquid waste or sewage from uh, processing uh, plants, uh, which in turn affects uh, um, uh, river systems, right, where there's uh, the, the effluent running to. Um, Another challenge is this lack of improved technologies uh, that can actually uh, improve the existing production. Uh, also, uh, looking at cane varieties, uh, the uh, challenge of prevalence of diseases and pests. Um, and I think, again, here, uh, it, it also reflecting back, it, that, that finance problem is sort of a reoccurrent thing, uh, right? What Abera also mentioned is that tackling diseases and pests, getting the modern cane varieties, etc., are very much a a, a plan and a priority, but uh, they are uh, difficult in terms of implementation. Um, from the numbers also presented from Abera, it is possible to cultivate 162 tons of sugarcane uh, per hectare on an, within an average of 15 months. 
uh, there are uh, plenty of suitable soils. Um, there's adequate uh, uh, water, um, not considering the drought. Um, and the average uh, sugarcane production per month uh, would amount to more or less 9 to 11 within Ethiopia, comparing that to 6 to 8 tons per hectare per month, uh, which, is, which are common in other parts of the world. Um, but as mentioned, uh, there is a uh, evident gap between the potential yield and the yields that are actually being achieved so far. Um, land productivity itself is uh, dependent, uh, so within Ethiopia, on uh, the agroclimate regimes. So um, uh, uh, within Ethiopia, there's obviously different agroclimatic zones. This affects the uh, length of cropping uh, periods, um, also the different water and soil conditions. Um, uh, and with that, with that, the sugar stage in lower altitudes uh, are relatively more productive due to warmer temperature and more fertile fluvial soils, right, in the, um, uh, in the plains of various rivers. Um, although, so although it is possible to produce, um, referring back to the figures on the previous slide, uh, between 9 and 11 tons of sugarcane uh, per month, um, Poor land and, land and water management practices are lowering land productivity of a significant, significant portion of the current farms. With regards to water productivity, water productivity largely, largely depends on the zones again, uh, soil conditions, uh, and the irrigation water management, including the amounts of water, uh, the irrigation technology, and the irrigation scheduling. And as Abera also already mentioned, this is really a challenge in schemes where we're only using, uh, for example, furrow uh, systems, as opposed to systems that are more uh, manageable, uh, like with hydro flumes or with drag lines or with center pivots. The water productivity um, um, one moment. Uh, So going back to the well, uh, back to the third point, uh, the existing sugar mills, particularly in Wanji Shoa, where uh, the the sugar mill uh, that Abera was actually pre presenting, uh, and another one which we are investigating, uh, looking into as well, is Fincha. Um, they do not attain the best, or let's say, state-of-the-art design standards and efficiency, and. Um, um, uh, although they are required to uh, be replaced or upgraded in order to improve, you know, as also highlighted by the research that has been conducted, the studies, as also highlighted by what Abera was mentioning. Um, with regards to the application of WAPOR, um, uh, managing extensive cane farm with conventional method is a big challenge. Uh, as Abera also highlighted, m measuring water uh, that is going in is possible, but within the system, particularly within furrow uh, irrigated systems, it sort of gets lost, and it's very difficult to actually see where water is going. Um, as farm size increases, modern management tools are available, um, and there with also uh, irrigation, uh, irrigation in fields is better manageable, uh, manageable and uh, crops can be monitored more appropriately. WAPR in this could, WAPR the um, uh, online open source database uh, using remote sensing products can actually help in monitoring growth and, um, and uh, yeah, looking at where there is stresses in plants, which could also be from diseases. So remote sensing in that sense, the WAPR uh, uh, portal, yes, could be a vital tool for uh, helping um, uh, irrigation scheme managers such as Abera as well. Um, um, and within Ethiopia, there's ample opportunity to actually collaborate with a lot of different partners. Uh, so the partners here mentioned are Wanji Shoa, the sugar factory, uh, a, a list of other um, sugar-producing industries such as Metahara, Fincha, uh, etc. 
they would be very eager to look into uh, the opportunity of uh, looking at irrigation, water supply, the adequacy, the equity within a system. Um, and um, actually, what was not mentioned by Abera, but Wanji Sugarcane Factory also hosts the National Research Center for Sugarcane Production. Um, Well, with regards to the Ethiopian Sugarcane Corporation, it was established in 2010. It plays a le leadership role in the development, management, and marketing of sugar. So that's an important thing that I didn't mention. The corporation manages all the uh, uh, sugar estates, but it's also directly involved itself in the marketing of sugar and all its byproducts. So they are also the ones that are distributing uh, sugar uh, for uh, consumer retail as well as uh, distributing sugar towards uh, industries that need sugar. Um, and um, yeah, that, that's I think what I can say about that. Uh, also looking at the time, um, yeah, I think that that uh, is more or less what I um, can say. Uh, yeah, uh, I. Uh, Hope uh, that I've done a bit of justice to the uh, tire. He will be available also for questions a bit later.